Boop. Happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, February the 25th, 2021, and today's daily Bible readings are Psalm 22, 23 through 31, Genesis 15, 1 through 6, and then 12 through 18, and then Romans 3, 21 through 31, and I'm going to take a look at the passage from Genesis today, um, and we're going to talk about when God makes a promise. Uh, so God had promised Abram, not Abraham, he hasn't changed his name yet. Um, Abram, he's promised Abram that he was going to make a great nation out of him. Remember, he asks him to just pick up and leave his family in his homeland and go where God tells him to, and Abram does that. So, uh, But he had promised that he was going to make a great nation out of him. But here's the deal. Abram was kind of growing older and a little impatient uh, because he's wondering, you know, he's getting really old, doesn't have a child yet. He's got, you know, he's doing well by himself got lots of flocks and everything. He has servants. He got people that work for him. Um, but he's wondering, like, should he put this guy Eliezer, who kind of runs everything for him, on his will, you know, because he doesn't have any heirs and he's not getting any younger, either is his wife. And so he goes to God and he goes, uh, you know, you, you've said this, that I'm going to, you know, you're going to do this for me, but I don't have any kids yet. Should I, what should I do? And, you know. Is is Eliezer going to be my heir? He's the only one I really have to pass anything on to. And God pulls him aside and says, you know, let's go outside. Let's take a look up at the sky. And he goes out and he looks at the stars. And God says, you know, your, in, your inheritance, your heirs are going to be as numerous as the stars in the sky. I promise this. Um, and Abram believes God. And this is the really important quote. Paul quotes it all the time, that Abram believed God, and God counted it to him as righteousness. That God really hadn't done anything else other, you know, than travel with him. Um, you know, God hadn't fulfilled this promise that, you know, you're going to inherit this great land and you're going to have heirs. Um, that Abram hadn't seen any of that yet, really. He was he was just a sojourner in other people's land, right? Um, but God believed, I mean, Abram believed what God said. And God was like, that's awesome. You're a righteous guy just because you believe, you know, your faith, uh, that means something to me. But God doesn't stop there, and that's where the rest of the story picks up. He wants to solemnize his covenant, so to speak, if that's if that's a word. Um, I think it is. He wants to solemnize his covenant with Abram, and that's where we, we get to with the second part of this text, where it picks up in verse 12. Not sure why they cut this section out, other than the section that they did cut out is kind of gruesome, because it, it skips this part and just jumps into the sun is going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. So that's not just because it was getting dark out. What Abram had been told to do, what Abram had to do before this, was gather up some animals, basically all the animals that the ancient Hebrew people would sacrifice, um, and he was told to kind of cut them in half and lay the pieces out aside from each other. So, you know, you take a heifer right down the middle, split it out. Same thing with a ram, sheep, all, all the way down to the little birds, except you're just supposed to just kind of... Anyway, it was a mess. Um, and Abram knows exactly what this is about. Remember, I used the word solemnize. Well, this is how you would seal a covenant back in those days. Um, thankfully we don't do that anymore. Things would get really messy around the courthouse, but that's how you would do it. You would, you would take these animals, you would slaughter them and lay them apart, and then you would pass between the parts of the animal, apparently, and recite the vow of the covenant that you had just made with the other party, and basically be saying, if I don't fulfill my end of the bargain, my end of the covenant, you can do to me as we've done to these animals. And so, as, you know, Abram's done that, and he goes and he sits over on the hill and watches over these. The other part tells us that he had, like, shoo the birds away, right? You know, because the, the vultures are coming in because they're like, oh, buffet. And he's sitting there looking on this, waiting for God to show up, and he's getting really worried because he knows what this is all about. And he knows that covenants are between two people. So... He thinks, maybe, I'm wondering <laughs> if he's thinking, uh, maybe I shouldn't have pushed this subject so much. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, God shows up, of course, 
And it's God who passes between these pieces. It's God's the one who makes this kind of promise to secure his covenant with Abram. Abram had already believed. Abram had believed God's word, and God counted it to him as righteousness. And then God responds in this really visual, really important way as a response to Abram's faithfulness, as a response to his believing his word. So, it's an interesting thing here as we're in Lent and we're heading towards Easter to remember that on a time, a covenant like this, that God is the one who passes between the pieces, you know, in this, under the guise of this flaming fire pot, um, that he is the one that binds up the covenant with Abram. It's not Abram that has to do it. It's God. So anyway, that's the DBR for today. Go out, go forth, have a great day. Uh, today is gorgeous. Not so much tomorrow. It's the rain's supposed to set in. So get out, enjoy the day, and Huggins will be here tomorrow with another DBR for you. Boop.